All right, ladies and gents, welcome back. It is one o'clock Verizon time. We are recording. If you have not done so, please already uh, type your name and your school into the chat box. If you have any questions in this session, please type them into the chat box. And Dr. Parks, myself, and Mr. Lassley will try to monitor that. And, uh, today's session is about FFA. My name is Marcus Pollard. I teach in Newton County at Newton College and Career Academy. And I've been teaching for 12 or 13 years. I don't know, I got to add it up every time I think about it. And um, I've taught agricultural mechanics and forestry and wildlife and a couple other classes. But uh, Dr. Parks, you want to introduce yourself? Yeah, thank you, Marcus. Uh, I'm Walt Parks again, as he said. I'm at Bleckley County High School. I'm starting my 11th year there. Uh, I've been teaching, this is my 19th year. Uh, got a couple of extensions, so. As I told the last group, I'm on my downhill slope side. Uh, I teach uh, basic ag, ag mechanics, and I've taught several other uh, subjects as well. And uh, looking forward to a, a good session. I know Marcus probably will cover this, but I just wanted to uh, preface this session as well. Um, Mr. Lastly is going to kind of deliver or re-deliver what he's already talked about uh, in the video that I'm sure most of you have already seen about what's going to happen with FFA this year. Uh, he, I'm sure he will be glad to answer questions when he's done presenting. Uh, this kind of what this roundtable discussion is about, but please uh, refrain from criticizing or questioning or, or those type things. Um, the state staff is doing a great job. We have a lot of uncertainty. Um, my school met today about what the heck they're going to do this fall. Uh, things might change is very uh, fluid. So um, they're doing a great job and trust me, we got the best state staff in the nation, bar none. So we really appreciate all they do. But if you do have questions, uh, you, you don't quite understand how they're gonna do something about logistics and those type things, feel free to type those in the chat and Mr. Lassie will be happy to, uh, to address those, any of those questions. Uh, that's all I have, Marcus, thank you, sir. Yeah, welcome again to the firing squad of Ben Lassley. You know, everybody can shoot questions at, at Mr. Lassley here in just a minute. But no, like Walt said, you know, there's a lot of uncertainties. And I think one of the things that that you really come to realize when you get on the GVATA board is that every school system has different policies and different ways that they do things. And I can't imagine trying to trying to navigate this stuff from a competitive stance like FFA and all these different events and all that stuff. Uh, so my hat's off to you. Uh, couple of things, you know, this is our 11th session. There's one more after this. You've got to get in four. Hopefully you've, you've planned to do that. Um, you know, be mindful of whatever you got going on in the, in the computer background. If you, if you've got your screen shared, uh, just be mindful. This is a professional setting. Um, type questions into the chat box. If you have any questions, we'll be sure to, uh, to bring those up. And then if there is time afterwards, you know, Mr. Lashley may take an hour, but uh, if there is time, then we will use the remaining part of the time to, to really discuss how we teach FFA in the classroom. Uh, and then maybe uh, the last part of that is how we'll do that virtually, um, if that's the case for many of us this year. So uh, without further ado, Mr. Lashley. All right. Well, you guys uh, appreciate you making time to be here and appreciate the GBATA board giving me some time to visit with you. I've got uh, several things I want to go over and um, if you want to restrain from complaining, uh, like Dr. Park said, you can. If you don't, that's okay too. So um, there'll be opportunity for questions throughout. I hope that you'll ask. Uh, um, you know, just looking at the names and faces on here, most I recognize, a few of you I do not. And so it's exciting every year to start a new school year and know that there's new folks. And maybe you're new to Ag Ed, maybe you're just new to teaching because you've just come out of college. And, and so whether you're in a brand new program or you're brand new to the profession, uh, we have our own language if you haven't figured that out. And some of you know that language better than I do and I'll, I'll speak it and you'll be bored thinking, yeah, I already know that. And some of you will think, I don't have a clue what you're talking about. So I hope that, that when this is over, uh, that at minimum, you know how to get the answers to those. If you don't want to ask on here, one, I hope that you will. Uh, but if, if you don't want to do that in a public setting, if you'll reach out to me and let me know, our objective is to help you not to make anybody feel uh, like they're further behind. You guys have a very hard job as it is. 
our job, believe it or not, is to try to make your, your job easier and more fun. I hope that we do that. So if we start speaking in a language that some of you think, man, I, you think I'm at 10 and I'm way back here at three. Uh, I just need you to let me know whether it's on this session or when we get finished so that we can help as much as we can. Okay, so let me, let me begin uh, by saying that if you have watched the online video, um, a lot of this information will be the same. I'm not going to completely rehash last school year. We did some time in the video doing that. I do want to talk about the coming school year. So some of it will be a repeat. Uh, if you haven't watched the video, I encourage you to go do that because there is some information in there from Mr. Hughes and from me that I think will be helpful to you. Hope that you'll go watch or read the email that I sent out. Uh, but uh, I want to make sure that you understand that we're not just going to rehash that entire thing. There's some information that I probably didn't make as clear as I should have in the video that we're going to make more clear here. And some of the looking back at last year, uh, I'm not going to necessarily spend some time on that. Okay, so FFA membership for the coming school year. Uh, we are going to be a statewide affiliated uh, state again. I think most of you understand what that means. Briefly, if you do not, that means that, that everybody in an ag class, ag education class in Georgia, will be an FFA member. And so uh, we have a tiered, not a tiered, we have, a, we have an affiliation fee because we as a state are completely affiliated. Um, if you've been at this a while and you're wondering about which tier you may fall in, we fall in one tier as a state, so your prices will be the same. If you're at a middle grade program, middle school program, and you have exploratory rotating students, you have a flat middle school fee, okay, for $900, Every student that you teach all year long, you'll put on the roster and make them members. If you are not in a middle grade program, if you're at a high school program and you don't have that rotational, I'm not talking about semester versus all year, I mean the nine week rotations, um, you, uh, you will pay a $9 a head fee. Um, so we are affiliated, but because we're at that top fee or that top level, uh, it, it's a per person fee of 905, just so you know what that, where that money goes. All of your, your fee money will be sent here and we'll divvy out to National FFA what's theirs and what stays here for us. Uh, state dues have been $4 for several years and they remain $4. We did not change that at state convention. Uh, National FFA, because of the tier that we're in, receives $5.05 for every student. Thusly, our fee is $9.05. So if you're a high school chapter, when you put your students on the roster, if you go put 10 students on, you're going to be billed 905 times 10. If the next day you go put five more on, you'll get, you know, you'll, you'll be, you'll be billed for those. Um, so I'll come to invoicing in a minute, but understand that we're going to be all affiliated again this year. Middle school, you're going to be $900. You know, starting the school year, what your fee is going to be $900, right? Um, high schools, you will be based on how many students you put on. But again, the expectation is that you put everybody that you have in class on the FFA roster. Uh, how will we know that? Uh, because as, as ag teachers, your, your expectation is to complete your enrollment data, which means you show every student that you teach in class, you list them on our Georgia Ag Ed site, you declare which course they're in, uh, and, and, they, and you make them an FFA member. And so that, that, that uh, system allows us to see who's been made a member and who hasn't. Some of you have already figured out, some of you will be new to this. When you open up if, you've been, if you're in a program that has existed before, you're not in a brand new program, you open up the roster for the new year and there's all the expired students from, from past years sitting there. You go through, go through and renew anybody that's gonna be, who's been there before and is coming back, declare their class for this year, make them a member. And then if you have anybody listed there who's moved on and they're not coming back with you, there's an X to the left of that student's name. You just click that X, it moves them to the expired student folder and gets them off of your enrollment list so it doesn't look like they're in class uh, without being declared in a class, okay? That process does take some time. It's, it's probably not super exciting. It's really not a hard process. It does take a little time. It just takes diligence of sitting down and doing it, saying, okay, I got my list of students. I know which classes they're in. We're gonna spend some time and just go in and lock everybody into their class, make them a member and be done. If you're in a system where you teach uh, six or seven period a day and have the same students all year. Once you get past the first few weeks of school into the first month of school, other than that stray coming and going here and there, you could have your entire roster done middle of September, you know, early, early October, depending on your setup, and then you're done, you know. And so, um, so enrollment is important, uh, making sure that you have every student listed in your class. We do that because we need that data. We need that information to help protect funding that we provide 
that we get the General Assembly to provide for you. So you put those students on enrollment, you make them FFA members. Uh, one thing that we added this past year that I know was a little bit confusing for some folks, and we're going to try to make it less confusing this year, is a declaration of enrollment. Once you know that you have everybody added to your system, we ask that you, there's a declaration link on your site. We ask that you go declare. That's how we know to invoice you. Okay. If you've been at this very long, you know that in the past, if you put, if you submit one student for FFA membership here and then three more here and 10 more there, every time you submitted, you got an invoice. Some of you would have 10 or 12 or 15 invoices. And then you would call our office and say, Hey, my bookkeeper says I can't have 10 or 12 or 15. I need one. Right. And so to try to help you and believe it or not us too, we're going to try to do invoices one time in the fall and one time in the spring. And the way we're going to do that is we're going to wait on you to tell us that you're finished. So um, when Dr. Parks gets all of his fall enrollment on, whether he's got a six or seven period day or he teaches on a semester system, when he gets everybody on uh, late September, early October, he'll get that enrollment done and he'll click declare uh, enrollment. That means he's declaring to us that he's finished listing people that are in classes this year and he's made them FFA members. At that point, we'll send out invoices one time. So ideally, Blackley County will get one invoice for the fall and one in the spring. Okay, I hope I, hope I made that clear. If there's questions, we'll, we'll come back to that um, in just a little bit. Actually, that's, that is the, the end of that membership affiliation piece. So I guess now would be a time to see if there are any questions before I move to the next topic. Is that, um, is that acceptable? Can we stop and see if there's questions now? Yeah, typically, you know, questions pop up in the chat. Right now we have none in the chat. Um, okay. So what I would suggest is that you move on. And then if okay. people still have questions about affiliation, put them in the chat. We'll address it after okay. the next thing. One Very thing for, for new teachers, too, uh, I don't know if he quite said this, but when you do that affiliate, uh, that declaration, it's for both or all teachers at that particular chapter. Yes, thank If there are more than one uh, teachers, you all need to make sure you all communicate. And so one of you hadn't, has finished and one of you hasn't. Yeah, thank you. That's a good point. If you're in a multi-teacher program, there's certainly blessings to that, and and there are um, there are just extra obstacles. So that's a good point. Make sure that if in in those cases, all, not all of you, but a lot of you have let us know that really one of you sits down and, and takes care of that for everybody. So make sure you have all the information and input, and that's a good point. Make sure everybody's done before you send that out. Um, when do we pay the fee? So uh, membership deadlines, I think, are October 15th and then April 1st. And so what we will do, we need you to declare as soon as you can. Uh, once, and and I, when I, I don't mean the first couple of days of school. Take the first two, three weeks. For some of you, it'll be quicker than that. You'll be settled in and you know you have what you have. Others of you, it's more of a moving target. But you let us know last year that you really need your invoices at least three weeks, if not a month, before you are expected to have payment. Some of you are in situations where you can get it done a lot quicker than that. Some of you need more time to get a check requested and get it sent in, and we understand that. So you'll get your invoice once we know that you've declared and you're done and you're ready. Payment is expected by October 15th, if that helps you. So making sure that if you need a month, maybe by middle of September, you've sent us what you're, um, what you're, that you've declared in your enrollment. Now, all of that to say, just like the schedule we're going to talk about in just a minute for the rest of the semester, if we get into this and realize some of you aren't even starting school till middle of September, and I don't want that to happen, I hope it doesn't happen, then obviously we're going to have to make some considerations there. So I under, understand that. Uh, but, but if we get to start when we're supposed to start, and you get the first month or so of school, four to five weeks, and then declare, hey, my enrollment's done, submit, you'll get an invoice, and by October 15th is when payment should be, should be due for those. Okay. All right, I'm going to move on to the next topic then and let's uh, see. Middle schoolers that are taking basic ag at the high school. All right, so it's where a student is enrolled. And if some of you have unique situations, then maybe you and I and your region director need to talk. But it's, it is where a student is enrolled and where they are. Which, which FFA chapter are they a part of? And then the that was, go ahead, Ben. That, the short answer to that question is which FFA chapter are they part of? Okay. Uh, there was one other question, and this goes back to what I was saying about different school systems doing different things. But uh, it seems that some school is trying to put together an all virtual county wide mm. uh, online thing. So, yep. you want to address that? 
Yeah, so again, this, this can be kind of a bit of a moving target, but I'm going to start this way. The region directors and Mr. Hughes and I have talked about this, and we know there are a lot of options right now. We know that folks are looking at all their options right now. Um, so to try to help you and, and FFA and Ag Education as much as we can, but also to protect the integrity of our program, which I, I, I believe that we're all about, uh, there are some ways we've got to draw a line and say this is who we are and what we're going to do. So there's a difference in uh, going to Georgia Virtual School or some other state offered virtual program, which students and, and parents have the right to do. I'm not here to tell you why that's a bad choice. That is similar to a student deciding they're going to change schools. So if I leave Newton County High School and go to High School X that happens to not have ag education, then I don't get to be an FFA when I go to that school. I changed schools and I went somewhere that didn't have ag education offered. That is unique, however, this year. If I, if I am enrolled at Bonaire Middle School and the school has offered me an opportunity in Houston County to say, look, if you don't feel safe coming to our building, Ms. Kylie's going to offer what she's doing online. You're still a student in her class. You're on her enrollment. Instead of getting your instruction from her face to face, you're getting her instruction through Google Classrooms or whatever portal we've set up. You're still getting that instruction. Then that's a little bit different. You're still going to be on her enrollment. You're still going to be paid FFA members through that system. So um, I'm going to answer it that way. And, and maybe there's more of a specific question that Tom was asking. But if, if that is them not being a part of that school system, they're choosing to come out and go to Georgia Virtual, that changes the ball game a little bit. If they're still part of your system, taking your classes, you're just delivering it online, then it would still be the same. You, you enlist them in basic ag um, or forestry science or whatever the class is that you happen to be teaching online. I hope that, hope that made sense and hope that helps. Okay, I'm gonna move forward then um, to the National FFA Convention. I suspect by now that everyone knows that uh, that's gonna be a virtual event. We are not gonna be traveling to Indianapolis this year. Uh, that's uh, understandable, but, but sad, you know, for some of us that, that get to do that most years and, and enjoy that trip. It is a lot of fun. It's a great opportunity for students and I look forward to getting to go back next fall. But this fall, it's gonna be a virtual convention. I know very little at this point about that. I'll share what I do know. Uh, most of that is that on August the 12th, we're supposed to get more information from National FFA about how that will be delivered. Uh, it does sound like they're going to keep the same dates. So the end of October, I think it's the 28th through the 31st, maybe I don't have the date in front of me, but that Wednesday through Saturday, late October, is still going to be the date of the National Convention and it'll be a virtual event. Uh, what I do know is that uh, National CDEs and LDEs will not happen this year. So that won't affect everybody. But if you won a state event this past year, if your students won a state event with national competition and you were going to go represent Georgia in uh, agricultural mechanics or livestock evaluation or farm business management or ag sales or the creed, then those students are not going to get a chance to go compete. And, and that's, um, that's unfortunate for everybody, uh, but we're not the only state dealing with that. So um, I hate, hate to report that. One good thing the National FFA is providing they are going to offer some online competition for students. They're planning to do this even with an in-person convention as well. So more students will have an opportunity to say that they competed in a, in a national event. It'll be a virtual event now. There's no state qualifier. There's nothing that means that you had to earn your way out of Georgia to compete. Look for more information about those. If you've got students that want to do some national competition online, they'll have a chance through the virtual convention to do that. If you know that you have students up for the American degree, a proficiency award, a national chapter award, or agri-science fair. Those are still on. They're going to be done differently, but they're still on. So if you're wondering how that's impacted by the CDEs, it's not. Okay, we're still going to have those. We're reviewing proficiency award and agri-science and national chapter applications now. Uh, teachers who qualified and chapters who qualified in those should have already gotten some feedback from their scores and feedback um, on, that, on that system. We're, we're also emailing feedback from our office back and so uh, be looking for that. Those applications are due back to us July the 22nd. That's next week. We'll send them on the National FFA. Yesterday, I submitted 117 American FFA degrees from Georgia. Uh, that number is a little down for us from the last couple of years, but it is up compared to what I thought it may be in a year when there was no national convention. I, I really thought we may have more folks who would choose to uh, wait it out and go get their award where they could actually go. But we had 117 students turn in an American degree, which I think is exciting. I'm, I'm excited for them. It says a lot about their SAE program and their advisors and their families. 
Uh, we do have an entry in every star category, so we'll let you know how those turn out, um, and we'll let you know how proficiencies in national chapters turn out once they're judged. Questions about national convention? That's really what I know at this point. Okay, I don't see anything popping up here in the, in the chat about national convention. Okay, probably what we'll spend the bulk of our time on is how we're going to handle uh, how we're going to handle the uh, FFA events here in the spring. I did notice a question that I missed a little bit ago. Dates for uh, declaration of membership and, and enrollment and payment. October 15, April 1st. Okay, there should also be in our online calendar, but October 15 and April 1st. All right, so how are we going to handle state events here in the spring or in the school year, new school year? So a lot of uncertainty and knowing that you are facing different situations locally and you're not all going to start at the same time. Uh, you are, from what we're hearing, going to have different travel opportunities and restrictions. And, and so the decision has been made that the entire fall semester will be virtual. And that's from leadership conferences and rallies and other events, competitions. We're not going to gather students. I don't even thank you, frankly, uh, but we're not going to gather students for events in person um, in the fall semester. So what does that mean for competitive events? That means that we have re reevaluated and shuffled around our schedule. We looked at events, CDEs, LDEs, that we felt like could be handled virtually without really jeopardizing the event more than necessary uh, and still had the integrity of that event. And so uh, we made that decision. We came up with our list. So here's where I think I am going to show my screen and uh, see. This is in the email that I sent out. It is also uh, on the video that we posted. But these are, these are events that are going to be handled virtually in every area. Now, it does sound like there's one or two that based on an area, they were right on a borderline of the first and second semester. And maybe one region is going to handle them virtually in the fall, and another is going to handle them uh, in person in the spring. But uh, for the most part, this, this is our list. The FFA Creed. Employment skills, which used to be job interview, if you've been around a while. Extemporaneous public speaking, farm business, farm and agribusiness management, FFA quiz, floriculture, nursery landscape, prepared public speaking, that's junior and senior, and wildlife. Those events are going to be handled on the area level virtually in the fall. And you can look at your region calendars for the exact dates of when they're going to be held. Okay, and I'm sure you'll have questions about uh, with the public speaking events, if it's going to be virtual, am I recording my student? Is there going to be a live Zoom presentation? Regions have all that information that they'll share with you as they outline their process. But know that we're going to do the creed, employment skills, extemporaneous speaking, farm business, quiz, floor culture, nursery landscape, prepared speaking, and wildlife virtually an area competition in the fall. So we're, we've tried to have all state events in the spring semester with the plan that we'll gather in person to do that. I know that nothing is certain, uh, and we will have a backup plan if we have to go virtual in the spring. Uh, for now, we're planning on being able to gather people in the second semester. And we're doing so knowing that the first round of state CDEs will need to be from the fall area events that happen virtually. So you'll see some of the same names. Creed, Dairy did not show up earlier. Dairy is a straight to state event. So the first time you'll have dairy competition, is the state competition. It's going to be January the 16th. All right. Employment skills to state finals from the virtual qualifier. This is an in-person state finals. Extent, farm and agribusiness management, quiz, floor culture, prepare public speaking, and wildlife. This is going to happen January 16th. That's a Saturday at the FFA FCCLA Center in Covington. Okay. February 13th, round two of state CDEs. Ag technology and equipment ID. That is an ag mechanics related junior level event. All right, Ag, Ag Equipment and Technology ID is going to happen at the February state events in Camp John Hope. Forestry, land evaluation, lawnmower operations, nursery landscape, and vet science. Let me point something out to you. I'm sure you figured this out already. Nursery you saw in the virtual area events in the fall. So the, the area event for nursery happens in the fall, state events not till February. These other events you did not see listed virtually in the fall. Ag Tech and Equipment ID, Forestry, Land, Lawn Mower, and Vet Science. That means they're going to have they're going to aim at having those on the area level in the spring, which means they're going to happen in early early to mid January to get ready for a February state event. So if you haven't already started connecting those dots, 
I want you to spend some time thinking through that. That's when those area events will happen so that they can come to state in February at Camp John Hope. That's a Saturday as well. March is our third state CDE day. We're going to go back to Covington, the FFA Center on Saturday, March the 20th. Agricultural communications, agricultural education, ag mechanics, environmental natural resources, floral design, livestock evaluation, and poultry evaluation. These area events happen in the spring semester in person. The state events happen in March, Saturday the 20th at the FFA FCCLA Center in Covington. The events that are going to have state finals at the convention, ag sales, conduct of chapter meeting, discussion meet, marketing plan, parliamentary procedure, and tractor operations. That's probably the biggest uh, standout. That'll be a neat opportunity that we have not done before. So excited to have tractor operations in that big concrete parking lot in Macon at the, at the state convention. I think that'll be kind of a, a neat way to highlight that and have some people maybe get to watch the state finals that haven't had a chance to do that. All right, and then a few standalone events that you did not see scheduled someplace else. Horse evaluation will be April the 6th in Conyers. EMC Ag Electrification, April the 17th. That's later in the school year than normal at the FFA FCCLA Center. The Forestry Field Day, which is unique from the State Forestry CDE, if you're new to this. Um, it is a separate event. The date and location of that will be still to be announced. It will be later in the spring, uh, probably that March, April, May area. Meets evaluation, March 27th. That'll either be in Athens at the University of Georgia or at the FFA FCCLA Center. So one question I've had since posting this video, one piece that I did not make as clear as I should have in the video, why, uh, why are we doing everything between the two camps? Why are we not spacing it out? We don't have anything in South Georgia this year, and we've typically been doing something at ABAC. The reason for that is um, with so much uncertainty and scheduling events and where we are and are not allowed to visit, quite frankly, what we can control the most is the facilities that we own. And so ABAC's a great partner. They're a great friend of ours. Uh, I don't think they would do anything intentionally to hurt us, but if we get two weeks out of some event we have scheduled today back and they say, oh, by the way, we're shutting down campus, you can't come, then we're regrouping and trying to figure something out. At least this way we know going in where we can be, what we can have, what we can use, and we don't have to worry about being canceled based on, um, based on the facility telling us we're not welcome there, okay? So if you're wondering about why those facilities, that would be the answer to that question. Okay, I'm going to pause there and see if there are any questions about how we're going to handle those events. You had one coming up earlier from a national convention from Meredith in Effingham. Uh, will there be a fee for chapters to register for national convention? Good question. I don't have the answer to that, Meredith. I, the answer is going to be yes. I, I did read that there is going to be a registration fee. I don't know how much or how that will be implemented. I expect fully that um, on, on August 12th when they share their more information, that will be part of that. I do think I read in the initial release that there is still going to be a chapter registration process, and I'm certain that there will be a fee tied to it. I don't know whether it will be by chapter or by, by person. I don't know the answer to that. Oh, yeah. Um, can students count national convention activities toward their state degree? That's a good question. I had that back in the spring when we did a virtual state convention. And so I think kind of what we've decided as a group um, is that there's, there's really not a way for us to say we can't do that. Uh, ultimately, as the advisor, uh, that's going to fall back on you. If you can, with integrity, say, yes, that student participated in and engaged in the National Convention virtually or the State Convention in 2019 virtually, and you're willing to put your signature on that and say that they did it, uh, then I think that's what we're going to accept and give you the benefit of the doubt and the student the benefit of the doubt. It's not their fault the activity didn't happen in person. And so I think that's the way we're going to have to play that. And so I, I believe everybody will do that uh, with the right integrity. But if, if you were wondering on that and counting on, quite frankly, a student needing that to qualify for a state degree. And real quickly, if you don't know what we're talking about, um, to earn the state FFA degree and the American degree, a student has got to be engaged in a certain number of activities beyond the chapter level. And some of you are mapping that out now. You're mapping out the events they have each year. And if you're counting on the state convention for that student, um, that particular year, the national convention, and that may put them in a bind if they can't count it. So I hope that answers that question. Okay, I'm going to move forward. And if I missed anything else, then um, about, about the spring events, we'll come back to it. Um, I, you know, well, before I move on, let me, let me just say this. As much as any year, and we need this every year, uh, we really need y'all to communicate with us. 
and let us know what's going on with you. Um, our region offices and our office are really here to help you. Uh, we do try to keep our thumb on the pulse of what's going on. We try to make sure that we listen and hear from you. Um, but please don't suffer in silence. If, you, if there's something you're dealing with that you think, man, this is it's going to be really hard to do with the fact that my system is having us do this. We may not be aware of that. I can't promise instant relief, but if you will let us know what you're dealing with, we can be more helpful. Um, and so I do think our region staff does a really good job of, of keeping their, their thumb on the pulse and knowing what's going on. But if we're missing something and you think, man, y'all just need to know that this is, this is why that's harder, uh, let us know so we can try to be more helpful. And if we have to be flexible, um, then that's what we're going to try to be, uh, again, as, as much as we can afford to be that. So please communicate with us and let us know what's going on with you. It is going to take thinking outside the box. Some of you, quite frankly, do that better than some of us. But we've been challenged to do that the last couple of months. I know you have too. Uh, some of these CDEs and LDEs are going to look a little bit different in order to get them done the way they're going to have to be done. So I uh, hope that you will offer your feedback and offer your thoughts, but be understanding of the fact that we're trying to make these events possible for everybody in every situation. Okay, got a, got a national convention question. AgriScience winners, will they know about their interview process on August the 12th? Uh, I hope that we at least know, we will not know yet if they're finalists at that point, but it, we will know if there's going to be an interview process, how that should work. I expect we'll know that by August the 12th. Yes, we just won't know probably till 1st of September with AgriScience, Proficiency, and STARS, whether those students are finalists or not. Good question. Okay, let me get my last couple of topics. We're coming to the, the bottom half of the hour, and then we'll leave some time for other, other questions and feedback. So I hope that you are aware by now that we're offering a virtual chapter officer training. In the past, if you have brought your students to a statewide cult conference, you know by now that we did not have that event in July. We weren't able to gather people. Um, many of you do your own cult conference, your own officer training. Uh, that's, that's great. I'm glad that you do something locally and, and start the year by planning out with your officers, their, your expectations for them. But if you're struggling with how to do that or you want something fresh or different or you've been used to counting on our program, know that Andy Paul and our office and the state officers have scheduled some, some neat activities for a virtual cult conference. He posted registration on June the 30th. Andy did. Look for an email from Andy Paul. If you are new and you've gotten your new school email since June 30th and you're thinking, hey, how do I get access to that? I didn't get an email on June 30th. I wasn't on the listserv. On our listserv, you can go back and look at archived messages. So go look for archived messages from Andy Paul or reach out to Andy directly. Um, his, his email address is a paul, A-P-A-U-L, at gaaged.org. You can find him on our website. Uh, I think you can find the virtual cult registration material on our website as well. But you have till August 1st to register. There are three different tiers of the virtual cult, depending on what you're looking for and what you want. So I hope that you will um, seek out that opportunity. It's, a, it's something that we, we feel like will be very helpful to you and I hope that you'll utilize it. If you think, man, I haven't even elected officers yet, then get the material and use it on your schedule when you do get officers. If you've already got your officers and waiting to do a training, get this material and use it with them uh, in supplement of what you already have planned for. So I hope that you'll be aware of that. I'm excited to tell you that uh, we have a new administrative assistant in our office. Hannah Elric started with us July the 1st. Hannah's a former ag teacher, did a great job there, was looking for a change, and her family moved a little further north from where they were living. So I am beyond excited that Hannah is here working with us. She's going to do a great job. Um, Ms. White, Ms. Martha White was with us for 25 years. It was really sad to see her go. She's a great lady, but she's going to get more time with grandkids and get a chance to be retired and do whatever she wants to do. So I'm happy for Ms. White. Appreciate those of you that reached out to her and shared kind words before she left. Um, but I am really, really excited that Hannah's with us. One thing I want to mention to you there, it's her, she's posted on the website as well. But if you've been used to emailing gaffa at uga.edu, that will not get to Hannah. Hannah's got an email address that is her own. It's hlric at gaaged.org. Okay, hlric at gaaged.org. So as you see information from Hannah, she'll be asking you um, questions if we if we have something that's not been submitted yet or we're trying to track down money or you've got questions about rosters or anything, um, make sure and call our office. Hannah will be helpful in that process and be on the lookout for more information from her. And if you need something, please call on her. We want to make sure and share that. 
I'm also really excited to share with you that we're going to have a state theme again this year. Uh, last year, National FFA did not do a nationwide theme, and so our officers planned to do a state theme. Uh, they used Limitless. I thought it went over really well. We had some great graphics and used it throughout the year. We're not ready today to release it. We have identified it, worked on the graphics. July the 31st is a Friday. Uh, we will do a theme reveal on July 31st on Friday and uh, share with you some material that you can, if you want to use that throughout your chapter through the coming year, we'll make sure that you know what the state theme is uh, on July the 31st. Okay, it's 1.35. That leaves us about 25 minutes. So are there questions that we, um, that we missed and then something, um, something else that we might need to get to? Do you think August one day can be stretched so that we return August 3rd? I don't know the August one date that you're talking about. So tell me, uh, I'm, I may have said something incorrectly. If I said there was a due date August 1, oh, that's registration for Colt. I got you. That's registration for Colt. If you'll reach out to Andy and let him know what you're dealing with, we will be as helpful there as we can. Uh, I, I misunderstood what you were saying, but if you're talking about virtual Colt, if you will reach out to Andy, we will be helpful there. I promise. Did All right, anyone related questions related to FFA, put them in the chat so that we can get those addressed. And if there was something you were planning to hear today that we didn't get to, um, let me know. It won't be that I left it out on purpose. I'm glad all these good productive messages have come in because earlier privately on the chat, Mr. Allen was provoking me and trying to give me a hard time and I ignored him. So as you put in your good productive feedback, it's covered up um, his trash talk. So appreciate that. Ah, thank you, Ms. Nurswick. I left that out. Is there a process for virtual state officer visits? Yes, the state officers would really like to engage with your chapter. They would like to engage with you. Um, I would still like to try to have them out in schools. I'm still working through what is going to be allowable on our end from, the, from that perspective, how good we're going to feel sending them out. But part of that's going to be whether you can accept them. So I'm going to answer Sarah's question, but let me start by saying, let's still aim at an opportunity. Can they come to your school? So if you know you'd like a state officer visit and they love the opportunity uh, to come and do that. And if some of you have been used to that, please ask again. If you didn't know that you can invite an officer to your school and come teach um, and do lessons um, and workshops for you in a day during class time, you can. We'd love to have that happen. So if you feel like you can have visitors at your school and want to reach out and try to set up a date for an in-person visit, we'll try. If that doesn't work, we'll do something virtually for sure. If you know that you're going to be all virtual and, and not going to have students in school, at least for a while, if you'll reach out to us, the answer is yes. Uh, we will certainly line up, whether it's Zoom or whatever setup you have, we will set up an opportunity for those officers to engage with your students virtually. Part of the preparation we're making with, with them um, this summer is how to get ready to do visits and workshops and facilitation and we're adding the piece in, okay, what if you get to be in person? How do you deliver that? And what if you have to do it virtually? And they're getting that experience with Colt, and we would love to have you um, utilize them. So please call on us and make sure that, that those officers get a chance to do virtual visits. Now, assuming school starts for everybody, including the state officers, they, the college-bound officers have Tuesday, Thursday classes. So Monday, Wednesday, Friday are much easier for them because just like you don't, you don't, um, it's, it's frowned upon when you miss a lot of school, it's frowned upon for them to miss a lot of school too. So we try to use Monday, Wednesday, Friday so they can be in class on Tuesday and Thursday, okay? Uh, Emma Long did get to meet up with the Miller County chapter. Uh, appreciate Ms. Long um, asking for Emma to come and do that and she called and was very excited, thought it went well. So, um, so please, please reach out if you've got um, opportunities and would like these state officers to engage with your chapter. Guidelines for virtual competitions in the fall. Um, that's a good question, Mr. Boydson. If much is going to change, we'll have those posted quickly. We're going to do our best to make sure that the rules, the actual event guidelines don't change. Now, what may look a little bit different, uh, you know, with public speaking, so to speak, are you going to video that, send it in? Or are you going to do a live Zoom session? The, the region offices will share that information, I know, as quickly as they can. They may have it ready now. I suspect by the time school starts, they'll be ready to share that information. We make sure that we're clear on how you're going to handle that. But the rubrics, the rules, the guidelines for how each event's going to be handled, I think they have to be the same. We're not looking to start changing rules and making the contest look different. We, we looked at what we could do virtually without really having to change the rules. 
So I hope that makes sense. I hope that answers your question. And Sarah, thank you for asking about state officer visits. I was supposed to mention that and it slipped my mind. So please, please, please call on the officers. They really like engaging with your students uh, and I hope it will be helpful for you as well. Other questions? All right, Ben, we've got 20 minutes left, and uh, I think that we could shift gears to talk about um, maybe, you know, some of the FFA material that we teach in classes. And then, of course, if anybody has a question for Ben, please put yep. it in the chat. We'll address that. Yeah, uh, I'm going to mute my mic, but I'll hang around if there's something for me. I appreciate you all listening. Um, have a great school year. I know things are going to look different, but you guys are incredible, uh, resourceful people. And uh, I just, I know if anybody's going to make this great, y'all are. So good luck and please call on us if we can help you. All right, thank you. All right, so we had a basic ag virtual session the other day and a lot of the stuff for FFA came up in the basic ag. You know, we referenced the, the creed and, uh, and just history and official dress and stuff. And the reality is that a lot of us were in that session, but also there's 253 people in this session. And I guarantee you not everybody was in that session. So. Uh, anyway, so any questions that you guys have in relation to how we teach FFA history, uh, any, anything related to the emblem, you know, whatever, this is a great time to bring up those questions or ideas about what you do. I'll share something. All right, last year for FFA in my basic ag class, I decided that I wanted them to take ownership over learning about FFA instead of me just lecturing and them not caring. So they had to do their own research about FFA for the goal of getting new sponsors. And the new sponsors knew nothing about FFA. I used Chick-fil-A as like a example. The CEO of Chick-fil-A decided that he's going to sponsor somebody, but you have to sell to him why he should, you know, sponsor FFA. So they had to come up with a presentation, like a sales presentation on why people should care about FFA. And I, I think the kids understood FFA a lot better and the reasons why they should become members because they really had to do the research themselves other than just being able to answer a test about it. It went well. That does sound good. Have you uh, followed through and actually requested like from this project? Has a sponsor been gained because of this project? Just curious. No, because I did like, really big, broad, and I made them believe that Chick-fil-A was actually trying to sponsor. They were so upset when I was like, no, I was lying. Um, so that's the idea for us to for them to actually pick local businesses that they really like and enjoy going to and figuring out a way that they could present it to it, maybe put together a video to send out. Thanks for the idea. All right, thank you, Sarah. Joshua Boyston has a question that uh, I think a lot of people could actually weigh in on this one. How many chapters have an official dress closet for students to utilize for CDEs? Uh, did you use chapter funds or just donations to provide official dress? Uh, some comments can come through in the chat. I'd love for somebody to share like their check-in, check-out system for official dress. That would be really good. But while we're waiting on that, what I would like to encourage, the Gift of Blue is an awesome program. And, you know, one of the things that, that we've taken advantage of at Newton College and Career Academy is utilizing that Gift of Blue. And what we'll do, Cecily really spearheaded this, but we'll have all the students write their essay at the beginning of the semester, at the beginning of the year. And that's a classroom assignment. And so then that way we have that essay on hand throughout the year. And if we know that a kid could use the gift of blue for whatever their reasoning may be, um, then that's, we'll submit it on their behalf. And it's typically a surprise. And, and that is just huge for that kid because they get their official dress and it was completely unknown. And, and I think that that alone has changed the culture. Uh, so many of our kids have gotten official dress because of the gift of blue. 
And it, you know, as a new chapter, we were trying to establish that culture of wearing the blue corduroy uh, and, uh, and, and we did, and I, I credit that. So, all right, there's a lot of stuff coming through the chat. Let me look at so, that. So I'll, I'll chime in real fast. One thing, yeah, please. I kept having problems with my scarves going missing, my ties not getting returned. So I actually reached out to a lady in town that does embroidery and I am having my scarves and ties embroidered on the back this year. So they actually have the number system and they have to sign them out. So that way I can keep up with who has what number. Um, I'm also doing the same thing with the jackets because a lot of times my jackets go home with kids after events and I can't locate them again. So I was trying to just make an accountability system for myself. I don't know if anybody else does something like that, but that was a problem I faced in the past and I'm trying to incorporate that this year. That's good. I, honestly, there's so much going on in the chat right now. It's hard for me to keep up. Um, yeah, that's that's awesome. Smart. Sarah Nerswick, they lock the scarves away. Where can we find info for the gift of blue? Mr. Lashley, do you want to address that, please? Yep, so on the National FFA site, um, there's a give the, give the Gift of Blue link, and it, it's really easy. Some of you guys, um, I mean, I know about the program, but you guys actually have to do it. Somebody can speak up and, and share more with a little bit as I've walked through the process as far as I would go without ordering a jacket. It's very easy to put in the student's information and make the request, and so um, I, it's, it's on the National FFA site. It's easy to get to. It's easy to find, and I, I highly recommend it as well. Dr. Pollard, I know you have a lot of experience with the Gift of Blue. You want to walk through that process from the teacher side of things? Yeah, so I do the same thing as Cecily. I make the kids write the essay. It's only 250 words. Um, and so I've had kids tell stories, why they want the jacket, anything really. It's just 250 words, why they want a jacket. A lot of them talk about how maybe their mom or dad had a jacket or their, their sibling had a jacket and how much it would mean to them if they had one with their name on it, stuff like that. In fact, I probably got about five or six on my table in here that came in over the summer. Um, and so what I do is the kids write that essay at the beginning of the year and then I just file them all away in my um, email and then once or twice a month, I'll just submit one of them. And so you have to have the kids jacket size. And I always order their jackets just a little bit bigger, especially on the guys, because they're not, most of them are ninth graders. So I usually order them two jacket sizes up after I measured them. And then I make them type that on the essay. So it'll have their name. Um, and then I measure all of my ninth graders and I put their jacket size. They have to type that in their essay. And then um, you have to ha know which type of tie or scarf you want to have. So make sure you know that. Go on Shop FFA. So I don't know what kind your chapter likes, but we have a specific one that we, we, we like. Um, and then I ask the kids, like when they graduate, if they don't want them, that I will buy them back from them at $10. And so like they didn't pay anything for the jacket. And so I get the jackets back. So um, it's really, really easy. Um, I really encourage, I have never been um, declined in however many years Gift of Blues has been around. I have never been declined an FFA jacket. And so we've probably gotten about 30 jackets over the past eight or nine years. So it's an awesome program. Um, yeah, somebody said, who do you, how do you pick? My, I do members of the month. Um, and so those kids automatically get a jacket every, like, get a jacket if they don't already have one or didn't buy one. So my members of the month get one. Um, if I highlight their SAE, then they get one. Or if it's just a kid that I feel like, dang, they, they would deserve this. This would make their day. Um, I also write essays for also all of my special needs students or my English lang language learning students. Um, cause oftentimes, you know, the, the language barrier and so I make sure those kids get it and it also helps me build relationships with those kids in the ninth grade and those are the kids that usually stick around with me all four years yeah, and there's uh some other stuff going on in the chat uh, lo a lot of local farm bureaus will assist in buying the class sets of 10 so if you have a good relationship with your farm bureau you may want to reach out to them and then also goodwill is a great source for going by and buying you know, black pants and skirts and shoes and all the stuff that goes along with official dress outside of the corduroy jacket. Uh, and so, you know, you may want to check that out and start building you up a closet there. 
And then April Davis commented, and it was mentioned the other day as well, that, um, you know, members can nominate each other. And so maybe a good activity for your officer team is for them to decide on somebody that, that they think is deserving um, for the gift of blue. April Davis, Walmart equals OD shoes. I, I have, without a doubt, purchased shoes in Macon um, for official dress. And uh, I think that that was actually at Kmart when I did that. But um, anyway, a lot of good stuff there. Another neat thing we've done is we ask a community member to sponsor official dress set. We give this as an award. That's cool. At the banquet, good publicity for the sponsor and a goal for the students. That's really cool. Um, ah, Caroline Waldrop. That's a good point. All officers at my school had to wear OD all day on meeting day too. Yeah, we've done that before, you know, and that's a, that, that sets the culture for sure. Um, Old Navy is a great source for pencil skirts. Kroger Marketplace had perfect OD black skirts. Good to know. All right. So a lot of, a lot of good resources there and good ideas for, for building that culture and closet of official dress. All right. Any other questions related to FFA? Marcus, I wanted to bring up one other topic that I also failed to mention. Um, Andy Paul does a great job in our office with a lot of our conference material. He puts together a playlist on Spotify for Georgia FFA that we use through the year. He also um, turned those on. I don't I understand Spotify a little bit. I won't get all the terminology right, so y'all can make fun of me if you want to. He has made those available uh, if you guys want to use them throughout. So go look in. If you use Spotify, go look for Georgia FFA. Look for information from Andy if you can't find it or call him. But he's got several playlists already created, like reflective when things are slower you want the students concentrating when it needs to be up and active and moving and so if, if you know that that needs to be done and you just haven't built playlists know that there are some already out there that are clean powerful positive they're upbeat they're made for FFA leadership events so uh, I was going to remind that those are there if you do not already have access to those so uh, please go use them. Good comment there uh, a, a, you know an, another direction we can go with this is it's the last 10 minutes and traditionally we've been talking about virtual and here we are talking about FFA. So does anyone have any good ideas for virtual FFA meetings? I can tell you that we have flirted with the idea. We, our kids had our cult a couple weeks ago and we talked about having a bonfire. And then if we couldn't have a bonfire in person, maybe we'll send everybody a little small pack of s'mores. And so whether that's made in a, in a microwave or made in a little bonfire in the backyard or the, or even a Weber grill, you know, who knows? You need my, you need my address, Marcus. <laughs> yeah, I, we'll I send like you yours. one. You can join us. We'll send you one. Uh, but anyway, so that, that was just one of our ideas. And, you know, we had several, but anybody else, uh, you know, want to weigh in on something? Huh, Miss I just got in trouble. Miss Gunner wasn't here earlier in the chat. And uh, so I was going to share that. And she just sent me a message saying, don't give away all of our great ideas. So uh, anyway. Anybody else have any anything they want to share about a virtual meeting? Marcus, this this last week at another conference, we had a an ag teacher who's a Zumba instructor. Did it for a lot of California factors. It was the most fun I've had. Um, we also did a cooking class. Had somebody teach kids how to cook. We made pesto, so it's pretty easy ingredients. It was amazing. Um, we did. You know, trivia and those were all super super productive and easy to do i can drop his email if you want if anybody wants the zoom instructor he's so good i don't know if you were in one of the other professional development sessions we were talking about doing the creed while hula hooping so i'm i'm out on zumba i'm out on hula hoop uh, but maybe somebody else Scavenger hunts, that's the one that's uh, popping up. Virtual scavenger hunts, virtual trivia. That sounds good. Um, any other? Any other comments coming through? All right, virtual talent show. There's a lot of good stuff. Um, so I think, you know, here's something else. If, you know, we're talking about virtual, 
uh, while we all joke about secrets and don't be giving away the ideas and stuff, the reality is, is that we share all of our stuff on our social media anyway. And so, uh, you know, there's all these different FFA chapters that exist out there on Facebook, Instagram, all these different teachers that are always sharing some good stuff. Uh, if you're not on the Sarah Nurzik train, you need to get onto her social media stuff. She's got some good stuff that she shares. So um, I would think that moving virtually, there's going to be a lot of things that are going to inspire me through um, through the virtual media, virtual social media stuff that I see anyway. So uh, take take somebody's idea, twist it around, make it your own. Yeah, ag teacher how tos. There, there's all kinds of good stuff out there. And so you know, while while there are certainly some challenges moving forward, uh, I would say that we're very prepared to address those challenges. You know, and, and I I give credit to that to the state administration, the ag teachers across the state that, that helped lead, you know, this profession. So thank you so much. You know, there was a thank you to us for the virtual conference. We're doing everything we can. I, I you know, we, we, we went into this, I don't know about hesitantly, but with our own doubts, I guess. And uh, this has been great. You know, this stuff has been hinged on, on participation and you guys have been great in this stuff. So share any links, share any Instagram, hashtags, whatever you want to share. Dr. Parks and I will compile this stuff and we will put it together in an email and uh, and we're gonna figure out how to share it. We're going through all this stuff. Our, our emails are on fire right now. So um, anyway, if we can do anything for you, please let us know. Be sure you put your name and your school in the chat and uh, we, will, we will give you credit. We have one more session left at the end of the day, four o'clock, Animal Science. We hope to see you guys there. If there's anything that we can do for you, please let us know. Otherwise, we are done. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Lashley, so much for joining with us. Hey, Marcus. Can you hear me, Marcus? Yes, sir. Hey, well, uh, whenever everybody starts exiting, how about you and Walt, Ben, Krista, and Justin stay on just a minute? Yes, sir. Please. Certainly. I think that means that everybody was just told by the boss to get out. <laughs> no, 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 no. That's not what I mean. <laughs> they can stay as long as they want to. There ain't no secrets. They're going to be passed today. <laughs> All right. I know that Walt is dealing with a very uh, bad situation right now, so he may be away. It's, it's no problem. No okay. problem. All right. All right, Krista, um, last night, well. I'm here. I just, I know you can't see me, but I'm sitting in front of the window. Oh, there's Audrey. Tell Audrey to stay on there. Audrey, if you can hear me, stay on there. This applies to you. Audrey, the, uh, the list that you asked me for last night, I've got it and I'm about to send it to you and Justin. I had uh, Krista to pull everything uh, off the website last night and I've, I've included Krista, the uh, um, state staff, the camp staff, 
the foundation staff, I put all of those into um, into that spreadsheet. And Justin, I'm gonna send it to you. This is the most accurate list I got today. So we can kind of cross reference to make sure that we know who really is out there. Because all we have is our registration, you know, who registered. Right. And so as far as I know, we're still trying to pick the, as far as the know, odds. And as far as I know, it is uh, it's up to date as far as we know, as long as teachers have given Krista their information and the region coordinators have uh, uh, worked with Krista like they're supposed to. This is the most up to date, so it could change, but this is more than I had uh, uh, two months ago. So anyway, you guys are going to get it, and then uh, and then just let me know if you find any discrepancy, Justin and Audrey. Whenever y'all go in there and y'all find somebody that we don't have, then uh, on there. Now I will tell you that my list includes everybody who is paid through state funds, so. Even the secretaries are on there, the maintenance guys are on there. So some of them won't register for conference. And if you just ask me, I'll tell you who they are. Uh, like I put Melissa Reader on there. Well, Melissa's not going to register for the conference or anything like that because she only works part time. But she's still on there. And I can give you, um, I can guide you through the ones that we wouldn't expect to register for, for conference. All right. And I'm going to send it to Ben, too. Uh, and so y'all all will get it. And then if you find any discrepancy, just let me know, okay? Yeah, let me know too, please, because I am trying to get the website updated. So it's, I had a hundred, there's 80 different changes. So between 80, that means I had to change two places on the website last week. So um, I might have missed some or if somebody left and they, sometimes I don't know if they're closing out of school or, clo or somebody leaves and doesn't let me know. So just sometimes we miss them is what i'm trying to say so if you see somebody on there that you know is not teaching please let me know because with as many teachers as we have now sometimes i do that so Chris so if y'all see something um or if you so I've, all the changes that are on our spreadsheet of new teachers right now or changes i have all those made if i know a teacher is there yet so we've got all those updated. and ben gave me all the i'm trying to think well, we had the chapters in there. They just didn't have a chapter number on them. I right. did those after I pulled the spreadsheet. So, right. and, and there are, uh, Krista, I'll get you a list. I think there's a couple that aren't active anymore that we'll, that we'll take down, but I'll get you that list too. So thank you for your help. That'd be great. Mr. Ben, real quick. Yes, sir. So while, while the uh, session was going on, I was at, I, I received a phone call. Uh -huh. I was told that students that, select our online option for mm -hmm. the upcoming school year are not allowed to do extracurricular activities and that's kind of put me in a bind because i've kind of established my officer team right and now they're being told they can't participate you know they can't come into the school building so mm. if they wanted to participate in a cde i know they're going to be virtual but right you know it'd be ideal to have them in the classroom so your school, your school system told them they can't do extracurricular. Correct. Okay. Well, and, and you know, I, I don't think this is a formality. I think it's important, but maybe your school system will, will treat it as such. I understand what they're saying, but you know, we're not extracurricular. Right. The FFA right. Is, is part of that three component model that's part of ag education and extension of your classroom. So I would start with that you. And then if, if you think it'd be helpful to have a, uh, a state staff person help you if a region office person could sit down with your administration and explain that. But now I get if they're saying, look, if a student chooses to not be here, they're not going to come on school grounds. And, you know, that's something you, you may have to deal with. But but I would start with the idea that we are intracurricular and what the, those students are still getting virtual instruction from you. And then they're expected to do FFA events and you might and you supervise their SAEs. The, the, the deal that I'm most uncomfortable with is matter of fact when that word came out a parent called me i have a student that has a heifer and uh i told her that mr beecham said in his south region meeting our word for the year is flexibility we're, we're gonna have to be flexible as ag teachers the student I, I told the parent and ensured that she would still be an ffa member um and i told her that i would get back with her when i had up-to-date information on how to proceed but you know i kind of just put that fire out where I could. 
Now, when you say the students going virtual are not allowed on, are they still getting instruction from you virtually, or they're coming out of your school to do like Georgia virtual or something? They're they're coming. To the best of my knowledge, they're coming out to do Georgia virtual. Okay, well, that does change the game a little bit. That's what I was talking about earlier, maybe when you were on the phone, um, where we can afford to be flexible and try to be helpful to y'all. If they're still part of your program, if your school system says, look, we're going to gather, but any student who says, well, we just don't feel safe coming to school, but Mr. Anderson's going to post all his things on Google Classroom or whatever format you use, and you'll get that information virtually, kind of like you had to end this last semester. If they allow you to do that, and those students are getting your instruction virtually, that's one thing because they're still part of your program. If they choose to leave Crisp County Middle School, enroll in another school, this, in this case it's Georgia Virtual, they're choosing to go to another school that doesn't offer ag education. And when you're not in ag education, you don't get to be an FFA. So that does change the game a little bit. So those parents can know that, that we do need to be flexible to a point. Um, but we still have got to protect the fact that they need to be enrolled in ag education classes with you. So uh, that may be a conversation that needs to be held. Um, anyway, I hope, that, I hope that was a little bit helpful, but, but no, there's a difference between them, them getting virtual instruction from you and them actively choosing to leave Crisp County Middle School and go to school somewhere else that does not offer ag education. So, so let me ask this. I'm, I'm not 100% sure if they're going to Georgia virtual or they're having a set group of teachers teach online only. Right. This County middle school. Uh, if that's the case, I know, I know electives to a certain degree at the high school are only going to be certain electives. I, I haven't been told. And right. I, of course I'm at the middle school. Right. So I'm sure that, you know, I've got, I've got to figure out exactly what they're doing, but to, to navigate, uh, to navigate a plan, yeah, it, it's con you know for me as a uh, as a newer teacher, it yeah. is concerning trying to navigate these waters. Sure, so. well, I think getting I think getting at the core first of where are those students getting their instruction? Are they getting it from you? If not in person, virtually, are they still a part of Crisp County Schools, enrolled in your class, getting information virtually, or are they out of Crisp County Schools and they're going to some other state offered online virtual? schooling system because that could change the game a little bit okay. well I, I appreciate your support uh, yeah, man. I, I appreciate these sessions because mr marcus these have helped me i'm just finished up my first year but i've i've learned a lot being in these sessions so i appreciate that thank you all i'm glad to hear it morgan if we can do anything for you let me know all right well thank you all i appreciate it all right guys look at your email see if you get it and uh if you need anything else just let me know All right. See y'all soon. All right. Thanks. See you guys. Thanks, y'all. Right. Thanks, everybody. See y'all. Thank you, Ben. Good job, Ben. Thank you, Krista.